Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, it's the last day of April tomorrow um, and I have finally finished my April collab uh, piece for the collaboration, the little mini collaboration I was doing with my friend Gabby of Gabby Sheet Dolls here on YouTube. I will link to Gabby. Do check out her channel if you haven't before because she's an amazing artist and there is lots of inspiration to be found on there. So, uh, if you're a regular viewer, you might remember that I did my kind of work up with this straight away. We sent each, what we did was we just sent each other a prompt. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do it kind of monthly, um, but we've both had an awful lot else going on this month. So it's kind of not quite worked out. And then next month we've got our inspired, our new Inspired by Collab coming up. So that's probably enough to be going on with. But we, I'm, I'm hoping that um, Gabby will also want to do another one because it was fun. And we just sent each other, the idea is to send a physical, some kind of physical prompt in an envelope. Just thought it would be fun to open an envelope. So it could be a little snippet of poetry. It could be just a quote or a word. It could be a tiny item um it could be a color uh anything really anything that we thought might be an interesting prompt uh, to inspire a piece of art or craft or something so what did i think of? oh yes i sent her a, i sent her a quote <coughs> from the secret garden the book the secret garden and um she made a great start to her piece and then life has just got in the way this month so um I'll, I'll link to Gabby's but you won't you'll find her first piece where she opens the prompt and makes a start but you won't find her finished piece yet because she's not been able to get there yet but hopefully it won't be too long so the word that uh, the prompt that Gabby sent me was the word and the first thing that popped in, into my mind the first person that popped into my mind was Quentin Crisp and uh, and here's what I did this was a kind of just a quick charcoal a sketch kind of work up um, done it on A3, used this lovely um, frisk, it's a frisk paper, which one is it? I love frisk papers, I love that they're made in Britain too, it's nice to see that. So it's frisk pastel paper and it was really really nice to use, I, got, I, I won it, I won it, I was allowed to choose any of their paper pads, it was quite a hard choice actually because I like quite a few of their papers but I thought this would be good because I can use my sennelier oil pastels on this too, and it's a nice big size. So that was my work up sketch and then my intention was to go on and do a pan pastel portrait and I have nearly finished that so I'll show you that in a minute I've just got the kind of finishing touches to do I haven't filmed the whole thing because it was quite a long process just doing my little my initial sketch um that took me about two hours or more to do I'm not quick and it's a bit strange how the lines are very heavy now because I then used graphite frisk again graphite transfer paper to transfer it onto my pastel matte paper I didn't want to draw directly onto the pastel matte paper because I didn't want to spoil the surface of it it's expensive stuff and I knew I'd be doing a lot of scrib scribbling and, and rubbing out and stuff so I did it on this rough layout paper first and transferred it to the pastel matte paper so that's a Claire Fontaine paper this pastel matte paper is like nothing else it's got a it's like the, the feel of it is if you've not felt it before it's like a cross between if you imagine a cross between velvet and sandpaper <laughs> velvet and a very fine sandpaper that's what it feels like and it's lovely for colored pencils and it's lovely for pan pastels and in this case I've done my pan pastel portrait I've just got the background to do so I thought I'll just do that on, on camera and then I'm going to go in with some coloured pencils because I can use the coloured pencils over the top of the pan pastels as it's on this paper so let me show you where I've got to so far I'm very frustrated that it doesn't matter what I do I can't get my camera or my lighting to show uh, the to show my artwork very well to me it looks a bit on camera that's looking a bit corpse like <laughs> whereas in real life his skin looks much more much warmer and more kind of lifelike I promise <laughs> so what I'm going to do is try and uh, take a photo at the end I'll, I'll take a photo in a minute and I'll put that in the thumbnail and I'll put a, a photo or a couple of photos at, at, um, at the end as well so you can see a bit better because that's just like it just 
it just deadens all the colours. They're warmer and more vibrant than they appear on my on my camera. I don't know if it's the camera or the lighting, but whatever it is, I can't afford to spend any more on equipment right now. I've spent quite a bit already and I just can't do it. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna have to um, put up with it and um, back it up with, with photos. Um, so yeah, I'll go, I'll, <laughs> weirdly enough, I take my, my best photos I can take either in the bathroom or the conservatory, depending on what time of day it is, um, because you get, I've got kind of more, I've got light from more than one direction. I've got a good natural light, so I should be able to take a better photo, show you what, more what it really looks like. So I was actually quite pleased with this when I walked in this morning and I looked at it on camera and thought, oh. So there, there are a couple of reasons why I decided not to film the process. Partly, it was just going to take too long. Like I say, just that sketch took me more than two hours. Um, and also because it's easier to work on with pan pastels if you can have it more upright. So I've been using this. Let me see if I can show you. I've been using this table easel, which worked really, really well. And then any pastel crumbs kind of fall down the bottom. I can wipe them up easily when I'm done. And also it's easier to get the proportions right. If you're trying to do it flat for, for a camera, you end up with like this, this a huge head and, and things. And it's just, yeah. So I needed to be able to do it flat and I needed to be able to get my head over it. And, you know, that doesn't work for filming. I filmed most of the, uh, I remember to link to the, the first video where I did the charcoal sketch. I did, I did film um, most of that, but this one I just needed, I wanted to be, do the best job I could of it and I couldn't do that on camera. So what I need to do now is add a background. So this is a, um, it just looks so, so the colours look so blur. So you can see there the difference that it, the effect it has on the proportions when you lie it flat as opposed to having it upright, it just gives in this giant head which is quite nice like a sort of caricature of him you know but that's not what I wanted <laughs> um, and what I've what I've done is I've pulled out um, a selection of coloured pencils there's some Posca ones in there Polychromos um, and probably there's Prismacolor in there as well I think that's Prismacolor Prismacolor Polychromos and Posca the three P's my favourite colour pencils there's even a gold one in there I think that's a Faber-Castell one yeah that's a Polychromos gold one so I might I've tried to get the best effect I can uh, try, trying to make the, a little the little bits of jewelry look like gold with sort of shades of, of yellow and white and and kind of burnt sienna raw sienna that's a limit to what I could do and I also needed um just more detail as well so I might need more colors than this but that's what I've got for now I think I just want to get the background in first and then what I'll probably do is just get a little sheet of paper there is these um pastel matte sheets come with this stuff to put in between i'll still use fixative on this when i'm done um but they come with this in between so that you, you they don't kind of ruin each other and rub off too much so i'll probably use this just to lean on when i'm going in with my color pencil so i don't ruin it I put my hands through it so i'll keep that handy as well and what I think I'm, I'm, I've got these um, soft tools, made such a mess. I've got these soft tools that I've been using. Um, I might need to, for getting into the nooks and crannies, I will probably use one of these bigger soft tools to cover the background a bit quicker. And I'm kind of favouring like a warm, a warm yellow. Oh, I'm so frustrated, you can't really see what I'm looking at. So I think I'm going to go for that, but I, I, I might end up just toning it down a little bit with, with some of that, um, that very pale, that's actually yellower than it looks there. Yeah, I might sort of mix the two together. And who knows, you know, maybe I'll think, oh, no, I don't like that. The trouble is it needs to be dark enough to give me some contrast between the hand and also light enough to give me some contrast with the hat. So, um... Yeah, and I, I don't mind if bits can kind of fade away into the background a little bit. Uh, yeah, we'll see. So I'm going to start with this yellow because I don't know. I just I just like the idea. I think I like I like yellow with all of the other colours that I've got in there. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's go. Should I do the? But I think I should do the sort of fiddly bits first. Do you think? I love using these pan pastels. I particularly love using them on this paper. I wish it wasn't so expensive. I have to be a bit precious about it. But you know. Um, 
but I like how you can with lots of these I've mixed up actually on the palette some of them you can you can mix up actually on the paper and they just go on probably took me a couple of hours to do the sketch and probably three or four hours to do this it goes on so fast it's almost it's like painting but it's so much quicker than painting and you still get those kind of almost brushy kind of strokes which I really like the only problem is you have got a you have got to fix it and you've got to be really mindful not to lean your hand in it or something and ruin all your work okay let's let's get this background in and then i can do some details on the face now do i like that so far i think i'm going to i i, I yeah i really wanted to get his hands in as well as i think i said in the first video i just think his hands were always very elegant beautifully manicured and I just think that was kind of part of his uh, part of his look definitely I've given him some nice eyeliner and lipstick he never went anywhere without eyeliner and lipstick <laughs> just gonna try a little bit of this paler color as well I don't want it all one solid color yeah so if I work some of that in too quite like that and I will probably turn this paper in all different directions while I'm working on it as well so I can avoid putting my, <laughs> put my hands in the um, in what I've already done it might be easier just to take these out now and then I can yeah it's going to be easier and if I bring in any more colours I can get them out as well yeah, I like the idea of a sort of patchy go be go between the two. Right, that's my background in. I'm quite happy with that. I think it's a good contrast with uh, to the um, to the main colours without. Um, fighting with them too much yeah I think, I think they set each other off really well so now I'm gonna have a go with the kind of pencils so another tip I read when you're using them this way is to make sure they're nice and sharp for getting those little details especially when I do little hairs and things so I've got my sharpener handy I haven't actually got a blackout I don't know if I'm gonna use a black. I thought I did get a black but I can't see it now but I'm not sure I'm going to use a black actually I might want it just to I oh, know that there's a that's what I decided to do instead use this dark indigo and I colour yeah dark indigo polychromos um, rather than the black I've got the white I've got that very pale yellow um, got a couple of kind of peachy colours um, a grey, a lilac a very very pale blue and um, a couple of other shades of blue I think his eyes were blue in the photos I was looking at I used several photos none of them really showed the colour of his eyes but I could, thought I could just see a glimpse of blue in one of them so they're going to be blue <laughs> they're blue now <laughs>
Okay, I think I'm done with this, certainly for now. Um, I need to get some fixative on it. Uh, okay, he came and he came and went. I went wrong a couple of times and had to go back and try and <laughs> fix my mistakes and things. Well, I think I've done the best I can with it for now. And um, as I say, well, I will take a photo in a minute. Um, well, I've still got some daylight and um, put a photo on at the end to try and show you what it more well, what it really looks like. Um, I think it's got a bit more. I don't know, his face just looks a bit more alive in real life than it does on the camera the way I'm looking at it right now anyway. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed this. Um, learned a few things by my, my mistakes. Then I certainly need to um, practice a, a lot more, but I, it's just, I really, really enjoy working with these pastels. Of course, there's a lot of other things you can do with them as well, which I haven't even tried yet. I know you can use them to colour polymer clay I oh, know you can use them on fabric um, and for card making and things uh, yeah yeah there's a lot of possibilities with them I've spent a lot of money on them I got them I've got my set half price um, from eBay somebody was selling them off she'd barely used them you could hardly tell they'd been used really except for a couple of them were broken apart from that you couldn't really tell and I got the tools as well thrown in so I got a real bargain so but nevertheless it's still a big investment so I need to use them more and uh, yeah I've really enjoyed that does, does that show any better no it doesn't really nah <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much for watching me. Thank you, Gabby, for doing a collab with me. I hope uh, things settle down. You'll be able to get yours finished soon. <laughs> we'll be starting the Inspired by collab in a couple of days, so watch this space. If you want a bit of uh, inspiration and you'd like to join us, I'll be back with news about that in a couple of days. Uh, meanwhile, thank you very much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your weekends, and I'll see you again really soon. <laughs>